Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of IBM Edge. We're here in Orlando. This is IBM's storage coming out party. And uh, we've been talking to uh, a lot of the executives within the storage group. Uh, but now we have a special segment. Mike Sylvia is an IBM distinguished engineer, but he's inside the CIO office. So we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about what a practitioner wants from infrastructure, cloud, uh, 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 autonomic you know, activities and, and automatic, auto automation. Uh, Mike Sylvia, welcome to theCUBE. Hi, th thank you. Great and to be we're here with John MacArthur. Hi, John. Uh, Good to be here is a, a colleague and friend, and John is co-hosting uh, along with John Furrier this week. So, um, so first of all, Mike, uh, IBM Edge looks like you know, quite, a, quite a nice little coming out party. It is, absolutely. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity, I think, for people like myself. I mean, I do work for IBM, but I work uh, very similar to many of the attendees here who don't work for IBM in IT in order to provide the, 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 the processing capability that they need to run their business. So a lot of the CIOs we talk to talk about transformation. Um, many are focused on transforming the infrastructure, many on the applications, the, the development of the portfolio, and many are moving toward this notion of, of a service catalog. IT as a service, um, you know, heavy use of not only virtualization, but also bringing in uh, kind of reusable services and menus of services. Is IBM going through a similar transformation? Yeah, absolutely. We, we've had uh, standard facilities for, particularly for hosting, uh, standard offerings for hosting for some time now. Mm -hmm. More recently, starting about uh, two years ago, we began a major initiative to put in place a formal service catalog definition of and process around an assortment of offerings that we can make available through that. Um, it's a it's a long journey, and we're far from complete. But it's a, it's been a very good thing for us. What's your biggest challenge with with? Uh, I presume your vision is IT as a service, as as many IT organizations. What's your biggest challenge with uh, regard to um, fulfilling that vision? Well, I think uh, certainly one of them is that uh, IT is a, is an area that's grown up more as a craft rather than as as a as, as something that people use in a standard mode, and as a result of that. Um, we have, you know, we find that there's a lot of just sort of cultural resistance and otherwise because that's a great idea, let's start with somebody else first, is, is very prevalent. So for us, you know, certainly uh, IT as a service implies that you're, you're willing to use, uh, consume things that are put up as a standard kind of a, a, a service and that's, that's a real cultural change and I think many customers go through the very same thing. So I talk about some of the cool stuff that you're doing, you know, around infrastructure management. What's uh, what's exciting you these days? Well, I, I lead a team in IBM that uh, that uh, provides both a strategy and then specific definition of, of solutions um, architecture for all of our infrastructure. So that would include our, our hosting environments, our network, our uh, disaster recovery, uh, certainly storage, cloud, voice services, etc. It's a very complex area. Uh, so they're all very uh, interesting uh, to us. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're like anybody, we're focused on some of the big things that, uh, that everybody else seems to be working on today. Those would include the uh, cloud. Uh, cloud is a big initiative for us uh, that uh, we're working on to try to uh, both maximize our, uh, our flexibility as well as to uh, sort of control costs and to transition, as you said, Dave, the uh, movement towards IT as a service. So uh, it's, uh, that's certainly one of our bigger ones. Um, uh, other ones are certainly around networking, voice services. Voice is an area that I think is extremely complex and in some sense one of the, the last frontiers where we have an opportunity to really change things uh, in a dramatic way that, that really hasn't occurred in the past. You know, with the convergence of, uh, of, of data and voice, there are all sorts of opportunities that are coming with that along with all the other things around. Can you smart. give us an example of, of something that's sort of well, I mean, there for you. yeah, I mean, the, the fact that you can uh, you could now uh, easily use uh, almost any device, you know, whether it's a PC or smartphone, whatever, as a phone as well. I mean, a smartphone, you would expect it to do that, but I could use the data side of a smartphone and use the soft phone capability that I might produce for that and not even use the, the, the analog part, and, and in many cases, I can save a heck of a lot of money. Sure. So think, for example, of the IBMer who might be traveling to another location, another country, um, and first off, having to figure out 
the how do I even make a phone call, right? How do I make a phone call to get into that conference call I need to be on or something like that? You know, and it's very different in every country. And how do I do it with my phone? And then, of course, one of the last things, understandably, they'll they'll, opt, they'll look at is how do I do that optimally from a cost standpoint? Right. They just want to make the call, which is perfectly understandable. If they make, pick the wrong one from a cost standpoint, it could be extremely costly. And, and, and does security play a, a role in that as well? Well, it can. It certainly can. So one of the things we're trying to do, though, is produce a um, is to produce a, a, a one phone service that builds on all of these technologies, uh, soft phone and other things. So it might integrate Skype and Google Voice and could then, do and, all those and, kinds and, of things and my landline and my cellular into one sort of right. converged. And and that would provide an easier use model for IBMers to consume, right. but it would also provide us an ability to help control costs uh, in that environment. So, okay. looking forward to it, it's very complex. So I'd love to talk about, you know, to, to practitioners within a, a large organization, technology company like IBM, about I, what, I, what we sometimes call the dog fooding segment, <clears throat> right? Although, um, we were at SAP Sapphire a couple weeks ago, and Oliver Busman, the CIO of, of SAP, said, well, you know, SAP, we're kind of, European company, we prefer drinking your own champagne, not eating your own dog right. foods. Right. So, <laughs> so talk about some of the things that you might be doing that uh, are either in concert with the storage group. Um, how do you act as a, a, you know, kind of a surrogate for the customer, a proxy for the customer? Are you sort of an advanced testing team? Do you go into beta or? You know, what's the relationship there? And what are some of the things that you're doing, you know, with the technologies that are coming out of this group? Well, we, um, first off, we, first and foremost, we are a production shop. And so we're in business to run the, the IT that, that runs the corporation. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, we're always looking for opportunities to showcase. And for the most part, we almost entirely use IBM products and services, and services, actually. So we actually use our global business services, global technology services, their offerings to come in and do consulting as they do for any other customer. So we're very big on that. Um, and in the storage space, we're particularly big. We, we use entirely across the board IBM storage products like their uh, DS8000, and more recently the, the, the XIV and, and V7000 from a hardware standpoint. We're very big on all the Tivoli suite software mm -hmm. that does all the storage management aspects. One of the things I'm going to talk about later in the main tent is a, uh, a, a smart tiering capability that is actually being announced as a part of the Tivoli product line today, beginning to be announced as part of the, and to your point, we do occasionally become the guinea pig uh, that actually ends up producing things that end up in product. We took some existing storage products, uh, both from a software and hardware standpoint, combined those with our colleagues in IBM Research, who built us some assets to do the smart part of that, to organize the automated tiering parts. So, uh, and yes. that's what's actually ending up in product announced today. So system managed storage has been around since IBM invented it in, um, right. in, in, in the And I'm sad to 90s say I've been around long enough yeah, to have seen so, it too. <laughs> right, so, so how is this different? How is this, uh, is, is this better? Is, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's sort of similar to that, although it, this doesn't include the archiving portion that you're mm -hmm. thinking about there. What is different about this, it's a little more dynamic uh, in the sense that it's, it's looking constantly for what the um, uh, utilization patterns are of data against some set policies that we have and moving volumes of data up and down a, 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 a blended hierarchy okay. uh, based on a profile of cost and performance. So it'll look at data and it'll say, at this utilization level, that should be on this tier with this cost and performance profile. Etc. Some some have argued that that sort of capabilities are really important for cloud-based storage. So one of the problems with cloud-based storage offerings today is they tend to be capacity-based pricing, um, not necessarily performance, not right. necessarily availability, quality of service, but it's like I need X number of gigabytes. It, it, do you see an opportunity for IBM longer term to sort of actually yeah get into those opportunities, or is that? Or is that left yeah, to the I startups? Think, I think that it will. I mean, we're currently implementing it internally with a blended price. Mm -hmm. So we, we've determined one of the things is software that we have. You sell as a blended price, not a quality of service. Well, we're, not, we're, not. we're using it, consuming it internally at a blended price right. from our, our own provider, the other part of the IBM corporation that does delivery. Yeah. Um, but we, we've actually used that and um, um, 
and determine what's an appropriate mix, and they've given us a blended price for that. Now, we love it because it has cut our price per bite in half. We've okay. gone from what you know we used to be uh, considerably more expensive. That's going to help us mitigate what we are already experiencing, like most users, exploding growth. Do you guys do chargebacks or showbacks? We do uh, chargebacks you do. in turn. At a pretty yes. granular level. Yes. Okay, so you're operating from that standpoint as a service. A cloud service. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Everybody says they want to get to IT as a service, and I say, do you do chargebacks? And only about 15% of the people we talk to actually do chargebacks, yeah, so do. That's, that's a business model right. that you've made. Now, how about um, consuming as a, on a pay-as-you-go basis? As a practitioner, um, how advantageous is that to you? Uh, I guess it depends on your economic model and whether or not your CFO wants you to do shift CapEx to OpEx, but can you talk about that a little bit from a practitioner's point of view? How alluring is, is pay by the drink? Well, I think from a practitioner's point of view, it's very alluring. Uh, whether it makes sense over the long term, I think it may vary. Because renting is more expensive. Because than renting yeah. can be more expensive than buying, right? I mean, we've all faced those things in our daily lives that we make those decisions. There are times when you take the cab and there are times when you buy a car. Uh, and it's going to depend, you know, the answer, if it's a long-term need I have, I might be better off just to do it in the traditional way. If it's something that I'm going to have certainly a spiky or an occasional or just Risky, this one yeah. time, then I'm, I'm much better off to do the pay by the drink. A uh, practitioner may or may not <laughs> think about that whole equation. So that. IBM offers actually, I think it's got an object storage service that it, 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 it pay, it, where you can pay by the drink. Um, do you actually consume that service if you know what I'm talking about? We do about? in a small part of, the, yeah, of, okay. of, the, uh, of our application portfolio. For the most part, uh, we, we host a lot of it, we, we use a lot of it in, in a traditional sense for our production work because that's all pretty, pretty uh, uh, standard uh, tr traditional hosting at this point in time. What are you guys doing in uh, the area of, and I know you're focused more on the infrastructure, but, but talk about big data and the implications that has on, uh, from an infrastructure practitioner standpoint. Yeah, so, so in terms of the analytic capability, mm -hmm. I guess we, we've have, we have a gigantic, uh, sort of a software as a service cloud that we built internally called Blue Insight, mm -hmm. um, used by uh, some 200 plus thousand IBMers. Um, it's enabled us to provide a very handy single sort of place to go for an analytic capability against over a petabyte of federated data around the corporation. Um, so that, I think, is, is a good example of the sort of thing that we've both used some other IBM product to produce that, but also uh, you know, as, as an analytic capability. Uh, it's, it's also enabled us to reduce our dependence on a lot of one-off applications that were built to both maintain and provide access and, and analytic capability against a bunch of data. So that's a self-service capability? It is a self-service. Yeah, right. and, yeah. and is that, that the trade-off between sort of Data Mart and, 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 and Data Warehouse? Yeah, kind of absolutely. Th thing? Yeah. So, so you're actually creating a data warehouse that can be accessible like a Data Mart almost. Right, yes. Right? Yeah. Very business unit focused, so. All right, uh, we're out of time here. Mike, Sylvia, that was fantastic. We really appreciate, the, uh, appreciate the, you coming the, on. the buyer's perspective. Nice. Appreciate uh, having me. Mike, Sylvia, inside IBM CIO office. Uh, this is theCUBE, and uh, we're at IBM Edge. We'll be right back after this word.